Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Let's go ahead and we'll start into a, a reading from the 10th chapter of the book of Hebrews. Now, uh, understand Hebrews was written, uh, Hebrews, the book of Hebrews, the Jewish Christians. There's a lot of things in here that would not necessarily apply to the Gentile church as far as cultural understanding. But what this letter was written to, a, a lot of the things that keep uh, reminding them not to forsake their newfound faith in Jesus Christ. They were being persecuted by their families. They were having funerals. The families were having funerals for their children who had become believers or relatives who had become believers. They counted them as dead. They were under extreme persecution and pressure to renounce Jesus the Messiah and come back into Judaism. Even, such more that Paul, even, so, even, much so, even so much that Paul in the sixth chapter of the book of Hebrews tells us, he says here that, you know, that if you've tasted the good things of the world to come and so forth and the gifts of the Spirit and then goes on and says these things, he says, if you, amen, if, 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 you, don't, if you renounce that, I'm, I'm kind of paraphrasing, let me read it. I, I, I just was going to, I got kind of tangled up in my thinking about that, the, what he says here in chapter 10. And I couldn't get it quite quoted, but let me quote it properly. I say properly. All right, who's here? Amen. Raise your hand. If you're breathing, okay, most of you are breathing. Okay. Um, he says, those who've um, been enlightened, tasted the heavenly gift, made partakers of the Holy Ghost, Hebrews chapter 6, tasted the good word of God, the powers of the world to come, if they fall away, <coughs> to renew them again to repentance, seeing they crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. And then, of course, he says some things here in Hebrews chapter 10. So Paul's statement, Paul's been building his case to the Jews that Jesus is the Messiah, he's the only way, and don't renounce that and don't go back, okay? And that's important for one of the, one of the verses we read here. Let us... Um, um, verse 21, and having a high priest over the house of God, who's the, who's the high priest over the house of God? Jesus, hallelujah, Jesus is our high priest. Let us uh, draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Well, remember he said back over the ninth chapter, you know, that, how, that the blood of, uh, blood of Jesus will sanctify us and give us, you know, uh, how much, uh, God knows, I'm, I want to get ahead so fast I'm trying to get over there. Slow down, Ed, because I want to get over there. I'm ready to get on that spot where I can preach. I mean, I see it and I'm ready to go jump on and start, but let's get there. <clears throat> now, if I get to about quarter after one before I get there, is that all right? All right, that's good. Glad you said so. Remember in the ninth chapter, he said, For the blood of bulls and goats and the sprinkling of the ashes of a heifer sanctified to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ through, through the eternal spirit uh, uh, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Amen? Then he comes back over here and says, Having, a, uh, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience, wow, by the blood of Jesus. Amen? And our bodies wash a pure word. Let us hold fast our profession. The word profession and the word confession are the same thing in the Greek. And so here, let us hold fast our confession, our profession of faith, what? Without wavering. Anybody been tempted to waver in the past two years? Anybody been tempted to waver this week? Some of you may have got up this morning and were tempted to waver. Some of you just laid in bed and rolled over and, and, and said, I'm up. No, you were laying down. You were awake, but you weren't up. There's a difference. Up refers to vertical, not horizontal. Can I get an amen? All right. Why can we hold fast our profession of faith? What did Paul say here? For he is faithful that promised. I said he is faithful that promised. Come on, church. Let us hold fast our profession of faith, for he is faithful that promised. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and the good works. Did you know we're, we're supposed to be provoking one another to love and good works? Amen. Not provoking another to see how much you can go away and get away with? Amen. Think about it. You got people running around trying to make their case that it's okay to get away with this, it's okay to get away with that. And the Bible says let's provoke each other to love and to good works. You got to see people going around telling everybody, you don't have to do anything. That's works. Well, that's not what Paul said to do. Now, I believe Paul wrote Hebrews, but, you know, that's all right. 
If you don't, that's, we're not going to have a falling out over that. Okay? Well, you think. <coughs> All right. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as is the manner of some. We don't need to go to church. Well, yeah, right. Anyway. But exhorting one another so much the more, the more as you see the day approaching. Listen, folks. There's a day approaching. Y'all got quieter than a bunch of church mice. I said, there's a day approaching. Jesus is coming back. I said, Jesus is coming back. Hallelujah. It's not going to be long. Say, well, you know, I've been hearing, hearing that all my life, and it ain't going to be as long as it has been. Amen. I'm telling you, Jesus is coming back. And we've got to, we've got to once again gain a vision and expectancy of the Lord's return. We've lost that in the church so much because we've become so, become so self-absorbed, we're not even looking to the things of God anymore. Our church service is about you. Our church service is about making you comfortable. How about our church services being about us coming together and honoring the Lord? See, there was a statement made recently that's been birthed out of that whole mindset. We, we, obey, we don't obey God, and we don't worship God for him. We do it for us because it makes us happy, and when we're happy, God's happy. That is birthed out of that mindset. Instead of it being about him and honoring him and looking to him, we have started looking to us and what's in it for us. And I'm going to tell you, you'll never be satisfied when you are the king on the throne of your heart. Until Jesus Christ is firmly settled as the king of kings and the Lord of lords on the throne of your heart. I don't mean being born again. I mean he rules as Lord and king of your life. You will never find satisfaction. But I can go to heaven and sin. You'll never be satisfied until Jesus rules your life. And it's time we get back to preaching that and believing that and acting on that and living like that. Glory to God. Where Jesus is the king of our heart. Jesus is the rock of my salvation. His banner over me is love. Anybody want to go to a full gospel business meeting? Hallelujah. <laughs> Jesus is the rock. <laughs> Hallelujah. <clears throat> okay, all you ladies can go to Women's Aglow. <laughs> Hallelujah. They'd all get out there and sing that, you know. I'm telling you, we've lost that in the church. We've become a self-centered people. And you've got to understand, I'm telling you, persecution is on the church. And people, there's people walking around like their head in the sand don't even recognize that they're being persecuted. Because they're so lulled to sleep in a stupor. Paul says this, as we see the day approaching. For if we sin willfully, that's why I gave you that little preview on the front end. After that, we've received the knowledge, that's epinosis, of the truth. There remains no more sacrifice for sins. Now here, <coughs> this is not, now exegesis is you take what's there and you break it apart. And exegesis, E-I-L-E-S-E-Jesus, is you look, <laughs> I can't even, I'm, I'm just like, okay, I, I read it, I can't pronounce it, but I'm there. It's, it's not the same as an exegesis, is you look at the text and you, you put things there based on what the context is. In other words, we understand from this whole letter that Paul is writing to Jews about, not about renouncing Jesus. The sin willfully here is the renouncing of your faith in Jesus Christ. If you sin willfully, there remaineth, uh, after you've received the knowledge, epinosis. Now see, gnosis means you can, you can know something or learn something. Epinosis is you experienced it. That's a different word. It's not that you just memorized, you know, 2 plus 2 equals 4. Epidosis is you took four th two things and two things and put them together in a calendar. You've experienced. It's not just a concept. It is an actual experience. And so here he says, if we sin willfully, if we renounce Jesus after we've received the experiential knowledge of the truth. It's a different word. There remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. Okay, this is not talking about, you know, you got saved last week and you cussed this week. That's not what it's talking about. That's not the, that's not the way this, this letter was written. That's not what it's talking about. It is talking about the renouncing of your faith. Okay, if we sin willfully after we receive the epinosis of the truth, 
There remaineth no more sacrifice. Why? Because once you, once you go, listen to what he says here. But a certain fearful looking of judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three uh, witnesses. How much more? Well, just for pre the previous chapter, we're talking about the sacrifices that were given. How much more shall the blood of Christ, how much more shall we be, face sore punishment, suppose ye, shall he be thought worthy who's trodden underfoot the Son of God, and has counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing, and has done despite to the Spirit of grace. So this is talking about an, an apostate. This is the same thing that's referred to in Hebrews chapter 6. This is a continuation of the thought. For we know him that has said, Vengeance belong to me, I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the living God. Now, folks, I am telling you, there is a Satan is at work in the church to try to deceive people and then lead them out and, tell, and ultimately bring them to the place where they renounce their walk with the Lord. It doesn't start one day you wake up, you know, you've been, you've been praying in tongues and you've been hand, hand, laying hands on the sick, you've been casting out, that, you've been going around ministering Jesus all over the place. You wake up one morning, I renounce you, Lord, it's not going to happen that way. It starts out with the little stuff. It starts out with a draw to the things of the world. It starts out with, how much can I get away with? It starts out with, you know, I don't need to go to church. It starts out with, it's okay to do this and it's okay to do that. It starts out with, and it keeps dragging you and dragging you and dragging you and dragging you to the point you go, I don't even believe Jesus is real anymore. That can't happen. Oh, yes, it can. Now, I've shared this, but we, we had uh, a couple that was a friend of ours back in our church years ago. And, um, you know, they got off of some areas. And then ultimately, you know, she kept going down, the wife kept going down some paths, kept going down. she now mocks. Now, this, this is a girl that I, that I did everything except have her pray with me. I ministered to her. She came to our church. She got saved at our church, filled with the Holy Ghost at our church, prophesied, flowed in the gifts of the Spirit, walked with the Lord. Now she blogs and mocks the blood of Jesus. Walking in such darkness. Well, she... She just didn't know what she's doing. She wasn't ever saved. Hogwash. I know she was saved. No, she spoke in tongues. No, she flowed in the gifts of the Spirit. I got the Spirit of God. I know what some of the Holy Ghost is not. Now she mocks the blood of Jesus. She counted the blood of the covenant wherever she was sanctified an unholy thing. Trod underfoot the Son of God. There remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. Well, I just don't believe that. Well, Bible. Bible in your opinion. Which one am I going to take? Bible. Amen. And did despite to the spirit of grace. Listen to this. And for we know him that saith, vengeance belongs to me, I will recompense. <laughs> you don't want that kind of recompense. Saith the Lord. And, and well, God's a God of love. Yes, he is. That's why he sent Jesus. Because our penalty and our judgment was damnation in eternity, and he sent Jesus so we didn't have to go there. That was the love of God in manifestation. Not that once, you, know, once uh, you get saved and you come back, if you renounce him and count the blood of the covenant, you get to go to heaven no matter what because he loves you. No, you've got you to walk according to the plan. The Lord shall judge his people. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hand of, the God, of a living God, but call to remembrance the former days in which you... I mean, which after you were illuminated, you endured a great flight of, affi fight of affliction. <laughs> well, I'm tongue-tied this morning. Fight of afflictions, partly while you made, were made a gaze stock, both by reproaches and afflictions, and partly while you became, became companions of them that were so. For you had compassion on me and my bonds and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, knowing yourselves you have in heaven a better and enduring subject. Notice what Paul is pointing to here. See, sometimes we keep, we keep pointing to something in the natural, and, and, and the Word of God consistently points us to the things of heaven. Set your affections on things above and not on things of the earth. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Seeing that you're encompassed by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside the weight and the sin that does so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Why? Because we're encompassed by a great cloud of witnesses. It keeps pushing us to heaven. Yeah. Titus 2.13, looking for that blessed hope, the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to God. I tell you, we got so many people in church who aren't looking for the blessed hope. They've lost hope. Come on. 
<clears throat> we get our eyes on everything around us. We get our eyes on politics. Listen, I know we gotta, we've got to be good citizens, and we've got to take care of things, but you cannot get so consumed with politics and what's going on in the natural. You get your eyes off of Jesus. We sing that song, Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Oh, praise God. We've got to get our eyes back on Jesus. Come on now. I said, we get our eyes back on Jesus. Remember Wednesday night we talked about how that we have been separated from, spirit, from, the, from the dominion of, of spiritual death. And we now walk, as Philip says, in an entirely new plane altogether. We're walking in the realm of the spirit of life that's in Christ Jesus. We're not walking in the realm of sin and death. We've been liberated by the power of God. Can you say amen? And we need to keep our eyes on things above and not on things of the earth. Can I get a shout? You are not the frozen frozen. We're the Holy Ghost Church. Come on now. This is a theological seminary. This is the Holy Ghost Church. Come on. Cast. Now listen here. While you endured a great um, um, flight of afflictions, I'm sorry, you, for your compassion of me and bonds took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, knowing in yourselves that you have in heaven a better and enduring substance. Glory to God. <clears throat> Cast not away. Don't throw off. Your confidence, which have a great recompense of reward. The word confidence here literally means boldness, forwardness, assurance. Don't throw off your boldness. You see, when you're looking at Jesus, you can get as bold as a lion. You get, you get spiritually cocky. Not arrogant, but I'm talking about this. You get a boldness about you. Remember the, the disciples, they went in and they argued before the, the, saint, the, the, the judges and all that kind of stuff. And the Bible says this about them. Because they let them go because they couldn't do anything with them. They took note of them. They were ignorant and unlearned men. But they'd been with Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, when you get with Jesus, you come out bold. Amen. You come out with an assurance. You come out with a confidence. Let's don't cast away our confidence. You endured things in the past. You overcame things in the past. You won in the past. Don't throw that off. Amen. Is this 2606 Phoenix Drive? Okay. 616, right? And 18. 16, 18. All right. I'm in two units at one time. All right. Yeah, that's pretty much a line right there, that pole. That pole? That's a dividing mark. Whew. Hate that pole. Anyway, I've hated that pole since day one. I still have no affection for that pole. No, we don't want to do that. Do not throw off. Come on, church. Don't throw it off. Yeah, there's pressure. Yeah, there's things going on. Yeah, there's people out there preaching stupid stuff. Yeah, the devil's coming against you. But don't throw off your assurance. Don't throw off your boldness. Don't throw off your frankness. Glory to God. Put the word back in your mouth. Declare what the word of God says. Stand up once again and say, I will not be moved. Why? Because it has great recompense of reward. Now, the interesting thing of this, this term, frecompense. <laughs> Still thinking about Ficklin Stadium yesterday where Carolina got whooped pretty bad. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. You know you got water right there, right? All right. Well, I'm glad. The word, this, this phrase, recompense of reward, means... A future reward because of your faith and steadfastness. Amen. It's coming. I said it's coming. But because it's coming because you don't cast it off. You stay bold and steadfast in faith. 
your reward comes. We shall reap in due season. Be not weary in well-doing. For we shall reap in due season. If, if, not automatically, but if we faint not. Come on, church. Listen, what he says next. We're, we're going to pull these together. For you have need of patience. That after you've done the will of God, you might receive the promise. In patience, possess ye your soul. The word patience comes from the Greek hupomino. This, this particular variant of it is hupomini. But it means to bear up or to remain under. You might be under pressure. Don't throw away your confidence. You might be under attack. Don't throw away your confidence. You might be going through something you never thought, thought you'd ever go through. You don't like being there. You want out. Don't throw away your confidence. You have need of patience. You have need of remaining under that particular place. Why? Because he is faithful that promised. And when you remain steadfast in that place, glory be to God, you will receive a great recompense of reward. He says here, you, mean, you need patience. You need to remain under. Now, listen, not crushed. You need to stay in that place knowing that he is faithful that promised. Does anybody run anymore? My God, that's running grounds. You let, what? They went ice skating last night. They let, oh, I hurt too much to run for Jesus. <laughs> I'm going to hobble for the Lord. I remember one time I did, I, I ran, I did a bunch of front squats or something, and I had to go down my steps backwards for a week. <laughs> I couldn't pick them up. I couldn't go down them because they would just collapse. Ye have need of patience, and after you've done the will of God. What is the will of God? To not draw back. To not withdraw your confession. To not withdraw your faith. But to remain steadfast. Remain the same. In Hupomino, remain under that, that situation. Hallelujah. Standing strong, steadfast in your faith. Why? Because after you've done the will of God, you'll receive the promise. See, if you throw away your confidence, you won't get it. If you throw away your confidence, you'll never receive it. If you throw away your confidence, you become shipwrecked on the sidelines. And he's telling us here, don't cast it away. But in the midst of that place where you're under the pressure and you're standing steadfast, continue to declare what thus saith the Lord. Hallelujah. We over in Romans, the fourth chapter, it says that Abraham, who against hope, believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations. Weymouth translation says, under utterly hopeless circumstances, he hopefully believed according to that which was spoken. So when I stand in this place, see people going to say, to do the same thing over and over again and expect a different outcome is, 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 is the definition of insanity. No! The children of Israel walked around the wall seven times, seven days, the exact same thing. And, but on the seventh day, God gave them a different command. You go seven times a day, and on the seventh time, shout. For six days, they did the exact same thing. Stop listening to the world's definition of stuff. See, everybody wants to change something. They want to pull this. They, want to, they keep, no, remain steadfast. Stand your ground in the spirit. Now, listen, if you, if you don't have an answer, if you're not in faith, and you know, <coughs> you know it, get in faith. Yeah. I'm not talking about standing there in unbelief. Amen. Get in the faith. Know that you're in faith. Amen? Abraham did according to that which was spoken. Y'all hear you going home. It says, so you have need of patience. You need, have, need of hupomini to remain under. Not crushed. Oh, my, 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 no, no, we're not talking about being crushed. 
We're talking with a strength that comes from the inner man. We're talking about a strength that comes out of heaven above. We're talking about the greater one on the inside of us that empowers us. Glory be to God. Then in the midst of the storm, in the midst of the battle, in the midst of anything you're facing, there's one on the inside of you that empowers you with strength from heaven above. Glory to God. To stand your ground and to be a winner and to be a conqueror and to be an overcomer. Glory to God. So much so, as we said last week, the apostle Paul began to shout and to rejoice to the church of Corinth and say, now thanks be to God, which always causes us to triumph through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God. I'm preaching better than y'all are shouting. Put it on Facebook, okay. Oh, it's on Facebook now, all right, woo! Elvis has left the, anyway. <clears throat> Cap is here before other people. I don't know who y'all are, but glory. Can you say amen? amen? Once you've done the will of God, you might receive the promise. Listen, for a little while, he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Now, this is from Habakkuk 2. Write the vision, make it plain. That he that reads may run with it. It, though it tarry, it, uh, wait for it, it will not tarry. This is that Hebrewism that, was, that Paul wrote here, and he, used, he said this, now, for a, yeah, for a little while, and most scholars say this, and some translations say this, yet for a little while, a very little while. Stop thinking about the longevity of time on earth and how long it takes for stuff to happen. This is a microcosm in the scale of eternity. And it's going to be a blip on the radar screen. When you go, when you're in heaven, look at your life. You'll go, bleep, that was that tough. Where's that tough place at? Bleep. Oh, it was where? Bleep. Bleep. It was where? The blip. Come on now. We think it's, oh, Jesus. Oh, God. Oh, it's so horrible. It's lasted six weeks. Bleep. That's not even a blip. That was undetectable. It happened so fast, it's undetectable. So for a little while, yet for a very little while, he that shall come. Here's what I'm talking about. What does Paul point to here in the midst of holding fast, in the midst of you know, understanding you're going under difficult situations, of holding fast to your confession, of standing strong, remaining steadfast? What does he point to? Jesus is coming back. Jesus is coming back, not as an escape from being, you know, the, the, the trouble you're in. We got to get our eyes on the fact that we are eternal beings. Things are more, or, or have a longer, have a longer uh, effect, and, and things are greater because eternity is real. Jesus is coming back. We look at we look at the things going on in the world. We think, my God, it's terrible. Jesus is coming back. It's called the blessed hope of the church. Hallelujah. I said that's the blessed, blessed, not just the hope, the blessed hope. Come on now. The blessed hope. For yet a while, in a very little while, he that shall come will come and will not tarry. We have got to become more heavenly minded in our thinking orientation. We've got to start surviving in the natural and working for the supernatural. We've got to have our mind on the things of God. See, we, we always are trying to get people to feel better. Church, that's the whole new mantra of the church now, is everybody has to feel good. As long as you feel good, everything's hunky-dory. You can feel good and the world still be going to hell. You can be doing whatever it is that makes you feel better and people still going to hell. We're about the Father's business. We need to be like Jesus. Jesus was in the temple. And when his mother and father found him, he said, why did you do this to us? And he said, don't you know I must be. I must be about my Father's business. We run around trying to make sure everybody's happy and they, they have psychologically good and sound feelings about themselves. And the Bible's telling us, get our eyes. For a little while and yet a very little while. He's not going to tarry. He's coming back. 
So we need to get busy about the Father's business. You get busy about the Father's business and you'll have joy. Amen? Now the just shall live by faith. Now Paul quotes Habakkuk uh, further over. So I quoted out of Habakkuk 2. Now he's quoting further over. And he quotes this three times in the New Testament. Romans, Galatians, here in Hebrews. Now the just shall live by faith. So your hope is in heaven above. You know, we, we have the hope of a redeemed body. We have the hope of no more Atkins or South Beach or Gold's Gym. Somebody say amen, hallelujah. We have the hope of an endless stream of Parker's Barbecue made by Pastor Ed. <laughs> Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We have, you know, I know where Pastor John will be. He'll be over at the Crystal Lake fishing. I think he's already put in, put in reservations for a slot. <laughs> or at least a boat slip up there. Hallelujah. Man loved to fish. Yep. Does he carry a portable fishing rod with him all the time or something? Or? No? Okay. I just got him some string and a branch. <laughs> the just shall live by faith. And if any man draw back. Now listen. Go back over here. What's he talking about? <laughs> Drawing back. Losing your confidence. Casting it away, coming to the point where you, you know, you, you, can't, you can't honor. My soul has no pleasure in You can't honor the Lord drawing back. Sure, we're facing, a lot of you, I know people in this place right now, I'm, we're facing tough times. You're facing tough times. Some of you are in different, better positions than others. Don't cast off your confidence. Don't cast it off. Because you have great recompense of reward. You have need of patience and you have need of remaining steadfast in the middle of the storm. Amen? After which you receive the promise if you've done the will of God. Now, just going to live by faith. See, your hope, hope, and we're, we're going to get into this. Hope is expectancy. When you look into the word of God, when you, let me, when you spend time with God, with his word and so forth, in his presence and prayer, there is an expectancy generated just by being with him. You expect his word to work. You expect him to honor his word. You expect him to do what he said he would do. We are not of them that draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Verse 11, chapter 11, verse 1, now faith is. The substance of things hoped for. That expectancy you have. Now Paul comes out of all this about standing and about remaining under and about living by faith and goes into this chapter we call the great, the, the chapter 11, the heroes of faith. And there's all these people who by faith, by faith, by faith, by faith, by faith, go study their lives. All them by faith people had some tough things to go through. They couldn't cast away their confidence in the middle of the battle. They couldn't give up and quit when things were going bad. Even when they had made the most major mistakes possible you could make in their lifetime and in their day. Like Samson, in the last, he killed more Philistines in his death than he did in his whole life. Glory to God. Why? Because he got back to where he, his confidence had returned. He told that, he said, get me to the pillars of the temple. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. You say, you say I've gone through a tough place. <clears throat> I've backslid. I've gone the other ways. I've gone into different things. Oh, that's all right. Not that you did. It's not all right that you did. It's all right that you can come back. Because your hair can grow again. And the spirit return. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And you can go up to the pillars. Hallelujah. Of the temple of that, that's been built around in your life. Of the enemy. Glory to God. And bring those pillars down. Glory to God. By the power of God once again. Hallelujah, you are not left helpless, praise God. Hallelujah, you're not left defeated, glory be to God. Amen. Amen. Now faith is a substance of things for, hope for. The evidence, the title, the, the guarantee of things not seen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Let's take up once again. Let's be bold again. See, I'm going to tell you something. And I know this happens. It's happened to me. You used to be bold to make your confession. I declare 
then you have a couple things that don't go right. Well, maybe I shouldn't say that. Don't cast away your confidence. That's exactly what Satan wants you to do. He wants to shut you up. He wants to shut down your, your, your voice. He wants to shut down the declaration of your faith. Glory to God. He wants you to get you to back off and get in the corner and hide and, you know, and say, I don't know what to do anymore, you know, and have your eyes poked out and have your hair cut, you know, and hook you up to the grist mill and let everybody make fun of you. But I want you to know glory to God. I said, I want you to know glory to God. Hallelujah. God is still on the throne. Jesus is still Lord. The Holy Ghost is still at work in the earth. And the faith you once walked in, you can walk in again. By not casting away your confidence. <coughs> Go pick it up. Shake it off. Put it back on. It might be a little, you know, you might be a little overweight. Back to school Sunday, I went and found my old high school football jersey. Now, when I was in high school, it was stretchy material. It was dry rotted in 38 years, 37 years. So I went and put it on, and I heard it going, rip, pop, rip, pop. okay, stop. Yeah. And I, I, I finally, I did actually get it on, I went, I used to wear shoulder pads under this. <laughs> it was all snug on the shoulders. I had shoulder pads under there. It may not feel like it fits anymore. Let's put it back on. Let's put your confidence back on. Let's gird yourself once again. Amen? With hope and faith. Let's once again be bold. Let's not get the confidence. Bold. Actually, as assurance, one of the definitions is frankness. There's times to be frank. I'm not talking about my older brother. There's times to be bold. But frank, have a frankness about you, especially with now. We need to stop doing it to people and do it with the devil. Yeah. No! How many of you ever saw Star Trek Generations uh, uh, with the Borg in it? I forgot which one that was. You know, you know, and, and Picard's in there, and he's talking about all the Star Littles. He got you know all the Star Trek Enterprises in the case in there, and and the, you know, the Borg keep assimilating. And he goes, "I draw the line here." Yeah. It's time we draw the line. And we step across the line and say, I'm not casting away my confidence. Devil, I want you to know I'm a child of the living God. I'm blood bought, blood washed, blood held, praise God. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. I have authority in the name of Jesus. And I declare to you today that no longer will you be coming against me and pushing me back, but I'm advancing on your kingdom. Praise God. I'm coming to your camp and I'm taking back what you stole from me. Glory be to God. And I want you to know <coughs> you may have thought you had me down, but I'm not. I've been knocked down, but I am not knocked out. And now I receive once again the inner strength in the inner man by the Holy Ghost and I am going to stand up for everything you bring and I'm going to let the patience of God work in me and I will do the will of God and I will receive the promise glory to God I win hallelujah, hallelujah. and I declare to you devil and give thanks to God that I always had the victory through Jesus Christ my Lord I win over finances. I win over disease. I win over problems. I win over circumstances. I'm putting on my coat of confidence, glory to God, and I'm standing my ground. So bring it on, chump. Because I'm ready. Cock, locked, and ready to rock with the Word of God. Now, if you do that, make sure you have the Word of God. <coughs> Well, Pastor Ed said, do this. Now be ready. Yeah, yeah. Jesus is my friend that sticks closer than a brother. He'll never leave me. He'll never forsake me. He told me to come unto him, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Ooh, glory. Devil, I got a news flash for you. They that be with me are more than they that be with you. Hallelujah. How do you know? Well, he only got a third. So we have at least two thirds on our favor. Amen. Glory to God. Right. Besides, the last time he tried to outdo God with the speaking thing, didn't work out real good for him. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm 
trying to get this out. <laughs> Satan said, he said, I will ascend my throne into the heavens. I will be as the most high. Yet God said this, I will cast thee as profane out of my presence. And then Jesus testified, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Guess who had the upper hand on the speaking thing? Just like David and Goliath. Goliath said he was going to cut David's head off. And Goliath said he was going to feed David's carcass to the fowls of the air that day. But David, David said, you come to me with a sword and a spear, but I come. I come. I'm not coming in the strength of the flesh. I'm not coming in the strength of my ability. But I'm coming to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. Glory to God. And I'll cut your head off. And I'll feed your carcass to the fowls of the air this day. And took out that stone and nailed him. Well, he had four extras. Goliath had four brothers. Go study it out. David didn't take five in case he missed four times. He took five because he was going to take them all out. And eventually he did. There's another lesson that we're not going to go there today. The lesson is go ahead and finish it while you, got the, while, while you have the advantage. Because he had to have help to kill the last one. Last, after the last couple, he had to have help. But he carried five stones to kill all five giants. He didn't carry five stones because he might miss four times. Hallelujah. See, with God on your side. Ever say, God's on my side. Remember we talked about last week, Christ in you, the hope of glory, of the glorious future. Christ in you, your hope of a glorious future. It's not wrong. See, when, we, when we're believing for something, the Bible's already promised us healing. Say, well, I sure hope I'm going to get it one day. You're putting it off. You're not in faith yet. But it's not wrong to have the hope of a glorious future. We have the hope of a glorious future. Christ in us is our hope of a glorious future. We lay hold of that glorious future and the benefits of it by faith and give substance to it. But you've got to start with the hope. If you don't have any hope, there's nothing for your faith to give substance to. I can have a tank of gasoline in my yard and it won't do me any good unless I've got something to put it in. I got 1,000 gallons of unleaded gasoline, 87 octane. Hallelujah. If you don't have a car or some motor vehicle to stick it in, it won't do you any good. You can have faith that will move mountains, but if you don't have hope to lay hold of it with, it won't do you any good. Hope then becomes, you know, the place where you apply your faith and make it work. It releases it and brings it into reality. You had the hope of a glorious future in Jesus Christ. Don't cast away your confidence. It does have a great recompense. What? A future reward because you stood in faith and were steadfast. You have need of patience, steadfastness. Hupamino. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. Well, Pastor, we've been going through a tough time. I know it. Stop looking at your tough time. Get your eyes back on Jesus. Get your confidence back. When your tough times are coming, you're going, maybe you're going to walk, walk out of here and get in your car and go, my God, I got bills out the wazoos. Why don't you just look at it and say, I put my confidence back on. Jesus is my answer. He meets my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I remain steadfast under these circumstances. I will not waver and I will not change. God does bring my reward Glory. Now, I should have had at least five people run this morning. And I know I said something that made you want to run. Well, you know, I shouldn't run. Run in church. It's all right. It might do you some good. Somebody told me, I ain't ever going to run. That's the Holy Ghost makes me. Well, you ain't ever going to run then. It don't make you do anything. Amen. I said, amen. How many got blessed so far? All right, I got blessed just by preaching myself happy again. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 
27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.